What the? What can I say? This film is a doozy. With modern body horror films few and far between, at least the good ones, the substance tears into the cinematic landscape with its confidently artful set design, wild camera angles, and of course, its phenomenal body horror visuals, which are gleefully repulsive in a way that it's hard not to watch, if only through the gaps between your fingers. But the film is far from perfect, and I actually think there's chiefly one glaring aspect of the movie which pushes this bold film into the danger zone of B-movie territory, as crazy as that sounds. Because for all its visual spectacle, this movie is sometimes downright goofy, but almost certainly not in a way that you think. But before I get into all of that, what is this film about? The Substance follows Elizabeth Sparkle, an aged TV star who, at 50 years old, is suddenly confronted with her lost relevance as a beauty icon. The inciting incident begins when Harvey, the disgusting studio executive who bears no symbolic relation to any other notable Harveys previously in the entertainment industry, I'm sure. Well, he is overheard by Elizabeth saying that he needs to find a new star that is hot and young because Elizabeth has become essentially washed up news. Self-esteem shaken to the core, she finds out about a black market home kit procedure called The Substance, which with the use of cell replicating technology allows her to create a new version of herself that is younger, hotter and seemingly better than the old hag Elizabeth sees herself as. The main rule being the older version and the new version must have seven days each, no more, no less. When one is awake, the other one is put to sleep. But though they seemingly are one person, the younger and older versions seem to have different desires, thoughts and priorities. And so when seven days begin to seem not like enough time, the pursuit for Elizabeth's dream body soon turns into a bloody nightmare. The film is effortlessly stylish with a confidently vibrant colour scheme of canary yellows, hot girl pink, indigo blue and of course blood red. The bold colours an indication to the film's intention to arrest your sensibilities, to downright assault your senses in the same way the themes do. And let's be honest, the substance is a social commentary if there ever was one. The film focuses on the typical buzz topics of modern life post Instagram, ageism, sexism, unrealistic body standards, the entertainment industry's cult of youth and beauty, and the pursuit for fame through looks alone. And while this obvious message push would usually annoy me, the substance's main merit is how well it portrays the different ways society perceives the body and how it translates the moral argument against these perceptions seamlessly into visceral disgust, which I'm gonna go into now. The body horror is body horroring in this one, boys and girls. Of course, the special effects are unflinchingly gruesome and audaciously bizarre, and there are some scenes which really just turn your stomach. But what I like about it most is that these visuals go beyond spectacle, and as simple as they may seem, they are thematically significant and portrayed effectively. For example, the substance technology itself is a symbol of the rose tinted longing for youth that we all get as we go through the natural aging process and is an obvious parallel to the myriad of untrustworthy home cosmetic procedures people are being driven to use nowadays in pursuit of a better more aesthetic body which if not literally life-threatening then certainly does not deliver whatever results it promises often leaving you looking and feeling a lot worse than you were at the start but the body horror doesn't stop with the overtly gross stuff but may makes disgust and revulsion a tacit symbol of moral judgement. Harvey, the studio exec's repulsive behaviour in his eating and smoking and using the urinal, is emphasised through repulsive sound and sight. The audience is assaulted with the wet smacking of his lips and the unnatural extreme close-up camera angles that distort his face and draw unpleasantly close attention to his tar-stained teeth. 
all expressing the hypocrisy of an old man demanding youth and sensuality whilst also rejecting the natural aging process of women. Also, the scenes where the younger version is flaunting her sexuality is so hyper-focused with the close-ups of her body in isolation, the perfectly shaved bottom, the washboard stomach, the perfect teeth, that it too becomes in a way repulsive, as though the disgusting truth of being objectified as a sexual commodity is displayed in plain sight. And it's a good thing that the visuals are so good because the main thing that brings this film down and makes it close to the realm of a B-movie is its absolutely ridiculous dialogue and acting. The dialogue is cheesy and far too on the nose, especially when the thematic thrust of the visuals is already so blatant. Harvey's talk about needing a younger, fitter model of Elizabeth only works because of the acting chops of Dead Dennis Quaid. In less accomplished hands, the dialogue would have been too ludicrous that it would go beyond satire and into amateur hour. I can say this because outside of Dennis Quaid, Demi Moore and Margaret Qualley, the actors do feel like they just wandered in from their weekly improv session. Over the top, laughable acting. And I mean that, I laughed, but not with the film, but at it. While I'm on the topic of sheer ridiculousness though, and this is for people who've already seen the movie, I would like to add that despite what some people may think, I don't think the New Year party show scene was too much. It was outrageous, ridiculous, bonkers, but I could buy into the sheer insanity of that scene because it ramped up gradually from the beginning. But unfortunately, unless you're Tommy Rizzo, bad dialogue doesn't add much to an otherwise ambitious film. And this is an ambitious, bold, audacious film. And when it shows that visually, the film really shines. This is certainly a film to watch, behind your hands or otherwise. But to listen to it, it's a bit of a different matter. On the balance though, I do think that it does escape B-movie territory and succeeds in being one of the most revolting, wildly enjoyable cinematic trips I've taken all year.